Hello people, welcome back. This question is from gate 2000 exam. It's for two marks. They are saying, if in some computer floating point numbers are represented using 32 bits and initial values of three variables a, b, c are given, what will be the final values of x and y after executing these four lines? Now they haven't clearly mentioned are we using IEEE single precision or not? That means they have just said 32 bits are used to represent a floating point number. So we'll analyze both cases. What happens if we use IEEE single precision? That's 754 standard. And what happens if we don't use it? But in case you don't use it, you can safely consider that all the 32 bits save Mantisa part. Okay, this is saved separately. Now let us see. Can we actually store these big numbers? First of all, let's assume single precision format is used. We are using IEEE 754 32-bit representation. So in that representation, can we actually save such numbers? They are very big numbers. It is a 30-digit decimal number. Normally, we usually see 4-digit, 5-digit or 6-digit numbers. Okay, This is 2 followed by 30 zeros. Can we save it? See. 30 digit number in binary system will be almost of 100 bits, 100, 102 maybe or maybe 98. It will be approximately of 100 bits. Suppose those bits are 1, 0, 1, 1. I'm not actually writing the exact value. I'm just writing some random bits. The point that I want to convey is there will be 100 bits. Okay, so you have these 100 bits. Suppose this is the representation of this decimal number in binary. Now we will be normalizing it. Okay, so it will become 2 raised to the power 100 because an implicit normalization, this will be shifted here. And you know there will be approximately 100 bits. So this red X point, it's shifted by 100 bits. Okay, we'll place it just after the first one, implicit normalization because we assumed IEEE standard. Now, this is 2 raised to the power 100. This is acceptable because even if you add 127 to this value, that means if you bias it, still it will be in range. 227 can be represented. We can go maximum till 254. Okay, this can be represented exactly, but this 100 bit Mantisa can't be saved. For Mantisa, in IEEE, we have only 23 bits. See, 32 bits will be divided as 23, 8 and 1. 8 bits for saving this. This can be saved. But in 23 bits, you can't save the Mantisa correctly. It will be rounded off and only 23 bits will be considered. Okay. That means A and B they won't be saved exactly. The point that you need to know is big numbers. These are actually very big numbers. They can't be saved exactly. Only the numbers that are very small in magnitude, numbers that are near to zero, they can be saved exactly or with very, very small or negligible error. See, suppose these are all the numbers that you can represent in 32-bit IEEE format. The numbers that are close to zero, either positive or negative, I'm only representing the magnitude of number here. They can be represented almost exactly. But as you keep on going away from zero, that means as the magnitude of number increases, the gap between two consecutive numbers also increases. See, for these two biggest numbers, the gap is very large. Okay. If you want to represent something here, it will be rounded off to this or this. Okay. That means for very big numbers, exact value won't be saved and very small additions will be neglected. Okay. What I want to say is, okay, let's discuss that point later. Now let's move on to the first line of code. You don't know the values of A and B. How can you add them? Okay. We have only 23 bits. All of this part is neglected. We don't know what is actually actually saved, how can we add them? Look, we need to subtract them. This is some value. We don't know what is saved. Okay, because we haven't taken the exact Mantisa. It has some value 
which is saved in A. That exact same value is saved in B with the negative sign. When you add them, okay, this won't be 2 followed by 30 zeros. It will be something approximately equal to 2 followed by 30 zeros. When you add them, you are going to get 0 because in IEEE representation, both A and B will differ only by one bit. Okay, that is the sign bit. Their magnitude will be equal. So X is updated to 0. First line says save 0 in X. Now you guys might ask, why have I discussed all these points? It's for executing the second line. In this line, you can see we are adding 1, C is 1 to A. Now this number plus 1, what will be the output? You can see, for very big numbers, if you add 1 to it, suppose you want to represent this number. Now you want to add 1 to it. This number got approximated to this one because we can't represent anything between these two. Okay, so this one got rounded off to this number. This number plus 1 will be somewhere here. Okay, that will also get rounded off to this only. Which means A plus C will result in A only because this C is very, very small as compared to A. For big numbers, small movements on number line is kind of no movement. See, what I'm trying to say is, if you are thorough with IEEE 32-bit single precision, you know that the difference between two largest numbers that can be represented as 2 raised to the power 104. That means if largest number that is represented on in this IEEE standard, it is X. The second largest number or number one less than this, which can be represented will be X minus two raised to the power 104. Okay. We do have infinite real numbers. Each and every real number can never be represented because we have only 32 bits. So we select only some numbers, rest all are approximated to these numbers only. So there is a gap of 2 raised to the power 104. You can, you just try to feel how big this gap is. 2 raised to the power 10 is 1024. So then we have 2 raised to the power 20, 2 raised to the power 30, 40, so on till 100. Okay, 1024 is multiplied by itself 10 times. Okay, that is very large gap. Which means, if even you add 1, that will be neglected. We will come back to this point once again. But now, for now, let's just find out the output. So you can see, it is saying, Y will contain the value same as the value of A. Okay. This line says, X is equal to X plus C. Currently, X is 1. Sorry, currently, X is 0. We are adding 1 into this okay so x will be updated with one let us write this properly when we executed this first line x as value zero was saved in x when we executed this next line a plus c is kind of writing as a only okay we will understand it in more detail just have patience so value of y is currently a. Now we are saying x is equal to x plus c. That means 0 plus c is saved into x. 0 plus c, it is 1. Okay, so we are saving value 1 in x. Now y is equal to y plus b. Current value of y is a. That means we are saving a plus b in y. a plus b will be 0. Okay, because both of these are having same magnitude but opposite sign. So your output is 1, uh, value of x is 1, value of y is 0. Now let's just consider this line once again. See, we have just neglected the last many bits and we have taken only 23 bits while saving this value. Now if you want to add 1 to this value, Step one is we'll make the exponents equal. Say if you want to add 2.3 to 0 0.1, you can't directly add them if exponents are not equal. Suppose exponent here is 10 raised to the power 4 and exponent here is 
10 raised to the power 1. You can't just add these numbers and you can't say that sum is 2.4. Okay, that is a big blunder. See, this number is not 2.3. It's actually 23,000. This number is not 0 0.1. It is actually 1. 23,000 plus 1 is 23,001. Okay, the sum will not be 2.4. It will be 23,004. So what did we actually do? We made the exponents equal. I made the exponent 0. I just multiplied it by 10 raised to the power 4. It comes out to be 23,000. I multiplied this one also by 10 raised to the power 1 and we made exponents equal. In computer what happens? For making these exponents equal, we convert the smaller number in such a way that it has exponents similar to the exponent of larger number. See what I am trying? What I am trying to say is this is the smaller number. You write it in such a way that it is some number into 10 raised to the power 4. Convert 10 raised to the power 1 into this format. Okay. Now writing this number, it is actually 1. Okay. We want to write 1 in this way. Okay. That it gets multiplied by 10 raised to the power 4. So you can place this red x point here. Okay. So if you multiply it by 10 raised to the power 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, you will get 1 back. So this number, it will be converted in this format before addition. Now we will per be performing addition. So what will happen is place this red x point below the red x point and write it like this. So your answer is 2.3001 into 10 raised to the power 4. Okay, because both of the numbers had same exponent. So we can copy exponent. Something similar is going to happen here also. When you add 1 to 2 followed by 30 zeros on a computer, this number has exponent of 0. Okay, see, exponent of this number is actually 2 raised to the power 100. We have already seen it. Okay, while saving it, it will be shifted by 100 bits. What will be the exponent of this number? 1 in IEEE representation can be saved like this. You can see 1 will be saved like this. Exponent is 0. It's not the exponent that we represent. Don't get confused. While saving it, we'll add a bias of 127 and the value that will be saved is 127. But actual exponent is 0. Here actual exponent is 100. We are talking only in terms of actual exponent for now. While saving it will become 100 plus two, uh, 127. So it is 227. So just uh, focus on actual exponents. Actual exponent here is 0. So we need to convert it in such a way that this exponent becomes 100. So how can you write 1 in such a way that it is multiplied by 2 raised to the power 100? It will be 0. Point, a lot of zeros, almost 100 zeros followed by a 1, okay, into 2 raised to the power 100. Now you can see, we will neglect all of these bits and we are going to take only 23 bits, okay, because IEEE single precision is used. And if you subtract these numbers, sorry, if you add these numbers, we want to add A and C. If you add these, you are kind of adding 0 to A. Okay, that is the reason C will be neglected. So A plus 0 into 2 raised to the power 100 is A plus 0 only. So this value will actually be A. Okay, RHS will be solved and it will be equal to A. Okay, so in offline classes, some students used to come up with different approaches. I'm not completely convinced for that approach, but still I'll discuss it. It's kind of incorrect, okay? Don't follow such approaches. Whatever I taught you is valid enough to explain the reason for this A, okay? What they say is don't 
convert these numbers into binary. Just keep them in decimal only. Now we have 32 bits. We have 32 bits. Sorry for this. They say don't convert these numbers into binary and we have 32 bits to save these. In 32 bits, we can save 10 decimal digits. Bits are 32, but for saving decimal numbers, we can save up to 10 digits only, okay? Because 2 raised to the power 32 will be a number of 10 digits. Don't take all the digits as 9999. It will be something less than that. But you can say kind of 10 digit number can be represented in 32 bits. Now they say here mantisa is small. It can be represented in 10 bits. But when you perform addition, 2 followed by 30 zeros is added to 1. Okay, so we are adding 1 here. This will be 1, then 2 followed by 29 zeros. The last 0 became 1. Now they say only 10 digits of Mantisa can be considered because 32 bits are capable of holding 10 digits only. So this much part of the answer is going to be considered. This is neglected. I am not convinced by this approach. In detail solution is what I have taught you. Okay. Okay. One more point that I discussed in starting also. It's you have two cases. Case one, you can consider that we are using 32 bit representation discussed in IEEE standard. Okay. That's single precision. Second case is you consider it's not being used. If it's not being used, let's, let's now discuss what is going to happen. In that case, all the 32 bits can be used for saving Mantisa. So here you are taking only 23 bits. In that case, you can save 32 bit Mantisa. That means you will increase it a bit. Okay, still it would be of no use because you are neglecting this last bit, which is one. Okay, this is hundredth bit and we are taking only till 32 bits. Okay, so still it won't be of any use. Look, why can't we represent these numbers, big numbers? Why can't they be represented exactly? Because suppose some number, there are two numbers. They have these first 32 bits same, but only last two or three or say 10 bits are different. Now we are only considering these bits, the bits that have some difference, they are neglected. So most of the numbers will get rounded off to this value. Okay, that's the reason we can't represent them exactly. And their sum will also be rounded off to this value only. Okay.